the moment you all been waiting for. Tell us the story, Nate Campbell. Everybody, look, well, one of the guys was telling me the other day, um, Reggie Johnson was telling me, oh, you drop your hands on showboating. And Max Kellerman and all these guys for years have been telling people I was showboating against Robbie Heaton. And that, that's not what happened. And I never really talked about this because I was an active fighter. Mm -hmm. I had been having trouble making weight at 130 for the better part of a year or so. Mm -hmm. And I've been telling them I can't make this weight, I can't make this weight, I can't make this weight, but I'm ranked so high, I got to take the fights because I need the money. Mm -hmm. So I took the fight and in the camp, I'm blacking out in camp. I'm literally, I'm, I'm not blacking out where I fall, but blacking out where I would lose time and forget where I was. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, um, when I get to about 132, I couldn't, I couldn't remember what I was, I'd be doing what I was doing, I'd be, <laughs> ding! And I was in Freddie Roach's gym sparring Ben Dunn and, what's the other kid's name was? Ben Dunn was from um, Ireland and um, other kid was the champion, was WBO champion from um, Scotland, I think his name in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was giving him the, that smoke, but I, I started to take the weight off. I couldn't, I couldn't function. So mid round, so you'll be totally aware, cognizant that mid round you're just black out. Don't know where I'm, don't, don't, and, and because I was trained so well, I keep my hands up for the most part, but it would feel like, it would feel like I had lead blocks on my arms. Then I go to the corner, John hit me with some water, and I snap. I walked to the wrong corner. I walked to the wrong corner before. Yeah, and I'm like, um, I've been telling them for months I can't make the weight, but nobody believed me. They're, oh, you just lazy. Like, if I eat any less, I'm gonna be eating air around this moment. <laughs> and um, I just couldn't do it. And and well, there was no need for me. I felt there's no need for me to tell John I couldn't do it because he knew what I was dealing with. And um, shit, I, I never forget that camp. I came back to camp. I had some Everlast shorts on. Everlast gave me all this gear, and the, the camp before they fit so nice and neat. Then I came back, them shorts fit me like hot pants. I never forget my man Vince said, Nate got a kadonka donk. I said, like, kiss my ass. <laughs> Nate got a donk booty. Who, oh, Vince? <laughs> no, one of my, um, one of my guy Vince. Vince is like, he's family to me, man. He's out, he lives out in California. His daughters used to come and box at the gym. Say Nate got a kadonka donk. And I'm like, really, man? And I had to buy new shorts and everything. I just gained, my body just started to change. Mm -hmm. I started to get a grown up's body. And um, I get in the fight and I'm in the fight doing my thing. And I'm like, I want to get, get him out of here before I, because I can feel my body starting to slow down. Mm -hmm. I, to you on screen, like I'm doing everything that I can, I want to do. But I was that much better when I was working on full energy. And um, man, I never forget that moment that um, when I watched the film, it's like they say, put his hands down and walk to him talking. I walked to him, I put my hands down, and I was moving. I remember moving, like move. I, I knew I was. I'm like, I know my hands should be up. Mm -hmm. Why aren't my hands up? And I'm talking. Why aren't my? I'm talking to myself. He finna hit me. Oh fuck, he finna hit me, and. And I'm trying to turn to get out of the way. Boom! Left hook. And I hit the ground. Boom! And I'm like, shit. Somebody down. Three, four, five. Fuck is me. And I beat, I jump up, try to beat the count. But the ref started to fight. And I'm like, wow. I wasn't, I wasn't hurt. No broke jaw. I was so relaxed when he hit me. that I, He should have broke my jaw with the shot. But I was so relaxed when he hit me. I just went down. My body, my body was already, and I, now I couldn't. Now, what my problem was, I couldn't tell nobody that I was having that issue, cause I couldn't afford for them to tell me that I couldn't fight. Did you ever find out what the issue was? There you go. I went back and I, I went to camp and I, I went to camp and um, changed my whole diet. Went up to with John to camp and I fought Daniel Atar. Was it Daniel? No, I fought. I fought. Um, I fought. Um, Mark, um, the, the kid from um, New York. Um, I fought. Um, he fought. We fought to draw the first time. I go and I get in really good shape, and I come back. I got a new strength conditioning guide. This, that, and the other. Blah blah blah. He get me down the weight, and I make it. I still feel sluggish. Mm -hmm. 
but I can hold off. I'm not blacking out because I make the weight. He get me the boy. I make the weight. All these wraps, like wrap you like a baked potato, and sweat all and sweat all sweat it out. Sweat it out right. that way rather than the sauna. So I made the weight and I won that fight. So Lou Lou DeBella, Lou DeBella. There's some things that I that I that I'm gonna keep for later about that. Sends me to Australia. I didn't want to go to Australia to fight Pete again. Right. I wanted to stay here. They offered me thirty-seven thousand dollars. That was my end. That was my side of the arm um, purse bed. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want you. I said, tell you what. Why don't you do me a favor, Lou? Keep the fight here in the states. Please keep it here in the states. Cause I knew if I went to Australia, what it was gonna be. And he, he said no. And I said, well, send the purse bed. I still made thirty-seven thousand dollars. For the fight, but I had to go to Australia now. So I go to Australia, and because I only got $37,000, let's talk about the fact that all the money I made for the fight before that went to training for the fight. I got a $1,250 check from that fight. I didn't even pay John. The second fight? The, no, the no. First fight. The first The fight in between the Peden fight and the second fight. I went and fought Tiger Martinez. Mm -hmm. I got $1,250. That's what they gave me a check for. I paid for my own training account the whole nine. I had rent due. My rent was due, bro. My rent was a grand. I didn't even pay John David. So when people ask me why am I so, why man, why are you so, so loyal to John? Because John was loyal to me when he didn't have to be. He still trained me. I went to Australia. Now I don't get no training camp expense. I don't get a training camp expense. I go to Australia, I can't make weight. I don't have the same guy working for me no more. Mm. I get to Australia at 133 pounds. I couldn't shake up ounce. There's a picture of me, I'll show it to you sometime. I'm, I'm standing in front of a yellow wall, in a ring in front of a yellow wall, that's, that's Australia. If you look at my face, I look like I'm emaciated. There's a picture, picture of me standing at Shane Maid Mosley, I look chalky. I had to go to, I had to take the money I had to go to, go to, to train in um, California. Dude, I made, after everybody was paid, I made less than $20,000 for the, for the world title fight my first time. After everybody was paid. John David stood by me though, man. And, um, and, and when I got, I couldn't make the weight. I sat in the sauna every day. I snuck down and sat in the sauna every day for an hour. I made 129 and three quarters and I almost killed myself to get there. The fight was in the sauna. Came back to Florida. Came back to Florida, fought Johnny Walker at 135. Looked good, felt good. And then they told me, if you fight that, 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 this kid right here, we'll put you back in the rankings at 30 and you can make some money. I can't make the weight, but I gotta take the chance because the money's so good. So I took a chance. I got the 133 pounds and I was fine. I got the 132, I wasn't even the same fighter. That one pound. I got the 131, I, wasn't, I lost a fight to a guy I shouldn't have lost to. And the next fight I had was Kid Diamond at 135. The rest is history. People don't understand something. I had to, every, every fight I took, I took is on the B side, my whole career for the most part. And nobody ever thought or stopped to think about it that what fighters put in, I'm not actually gonna feel sorry for me. What, I, I, when I see fighters fight and I look at the way that they fight, a lot of times I'm like, mm, something else going on with that kid. It ain't that he shot, ain't that he done, something else going on with that kid. But I know that from, except from experience. When I lost, when I lost, to the, lost on ESPN, before I went to 135 and fought Kid Diamond, the next day I went to eat. It was a Sunday, it was a Friday, it was a Saturday. And I was so messed up. I went and sat down to eat. I wanted to eat lobster. I wanted some lobster so bad. And the people didn't put anything on the lobster, no butter, no nothing. It was so salty. It tasted like I was eating salt right out of the box. That's how, that's how trained I was of electrolytes. That Monday, that, that Sunday, I got sick like I had the flu. So I'm like, oh shit, man, I got AIDS. <laughs> I done got the hills. <laughs> I'm feeling sick. <laughs> I feel like I got two burglosis or something. <laughs> and um, I went to the doctor that Monday and the doctor looked at me and said, dude, I was still from, from Friday to Sunday, 
I had gotten sick because my electrolytes were so shifted, so off. Mm. He said, you can never do that again. So we thought you say, it looks like your kidneys have been, been stopping, intermittently stopping almost to the fact that what it looked like in my blood, let my blood and my, because nothing was working right. He says, so one of you didn't get hurt. He said, you can never go below 135 pounds again. It's unsafe. He said, um, they, they made that known to me. So I went to 135 and the rest is history. I became world champion the whole nine. But at, that end, at the end of my career at 130, people, nobody stopped and thought about the fact of what, 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 a, what I was putting my body through to get there. So your kidneys were actually shutting down. They thought they, were, they felt, they said it looked like they were shutting, in really shutting down and stop. So it a was, couple hours, your kidneys. Yeah, they would. So you'll build up a bunch of toxins. A bunch of toxins. Body. And then you, 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 you sit in the sauna trying to take this out. Man, I say no. Nah, that ain't what he said. That's that what it looked like on the on the what it looked my blood levels and scales and all that. And that's what was causing the blackouts. I was doing so much to my body, and now I'm fat. Like got a fat face. I'm like I'm not fat. I'm just like this is me. My body. My body's response to what I did to it for all those years. People don't get it. Do you have to take dialysis? Or do you no, have to no, 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 no. Okay. Um, the body heal itself, and I ate. I ate so clean. The body will heal itself. People don't get that. The body heals itself if you, you put the right stuff in it. And I try to put the right stuff in my body, except every now and then I got to get me a cheesesteak. I ain't had a cheesesteak yet, so, you know, I'm, I'm living foul right now. I ain't had a cheesesteak. I'm thinking Max's or something like that calling my name. Jim's. Escobibbles. Escobibbles. You know, I be trying to get on there. But, um, no, some, but people don't get it, man. You, that's why I respect fighters and what they go through. And you hear these guys call people bums. I hate that. I'm like. <laughs> Bum. Coming from a dude that worked for, work, work for Pony Express sitting behind a desk. But you wouldn't understand that because you got a white wife. <laughs>